Hi guys, welcome to .NET Mob. This is my first video tutorial in SQL Server Tutorials for Beginners. In this video, we will learn how to connect SQL Server using Management Studio or SSMS. I hope you have installed SQL Server and Management Studio in your system. If not, I have done a video tutorial on how to install SQL Server and Management Studio in your system. I have put the link in video description. Please go through that. Now let's back to our discussion. If you have installed SQL Server in your system, you can see that in the service list. In order to see all the services installed in your system, you can use the shortcut Windows logo key plus R. It will open run application. Otherwise, go to start then type run. Click on this run application then type services.msc. Click on OK. It will open a window with a list of services that we have installed in our system. There you can see the SQL servers. So in my case, you can see there are two instances of SQL Server, SQL 2014 and SQL E 2012. Before working with SQL Server, we need to verify that the service is running. In my case, we will work with this instance SQL 2014. It is actually an express version of SQL 2014. If it is not uh, in running status, you can see a start link like this. Click on the start link. It will uh, start the service immediately. When we talk about SQL Server instances, don't be confused. It is a result of SQL Server installation. We can have multiple instances of same SQL Server version. For example, you can have multiple instances of SQL Server 2012 Express version. Each SQL Server instance is identified by its name. The name is provided during the installation of SQL Server. Now let me open my management studio. SSMS is stands for SQL Server Management Studio. In the same way, some of us say SQL Server or SQL Server or MSSQL. All of these are referring to Microsoft SQL Server. So here we have our Management Studio opened and you can see a connect to server dialog box there. We need to provide connection details there. Now let's look what are they. So first of all, we need to provide the server type. Make sure that you selected database engine in order to connect SQL server instances. Then we have server name. Server name is used to uniquely identify an SQL server instance. It consists of two parts, machine name, backward slash, instance name. So here, you can specify the e server name by typing the details here. Otherwise, you can click on this downward arrow, then click on browse for more. Then you can see two tabs, local servers and network servers. Network servers are used to connect SQL server instances outside your system. In local servers, you can see all the SQL Server instances installed in your PC under this database engine like this. First part will be the machine name, then a backward slash, then instance name. When you are connecting to an instance that is installed in your PC, you have a variety of options to give the machine name. Starting with a open parenthesis, then local, then a closing parenthesis followed by backward slash then instance name or you can just type local host or you can type the machine name itself then the corresponding instance name it might be sql 2014 sql 2012 like that then we have authentication we have two types of authentication windows authentication and sql server authentication Windows authentication can only be used to connect SQL Server instances that are installed in your PC. In order to connect SQL Server instances that are outside the system, we can use SQL Server authentication. 
even though you can use SQL Server authentication in order to connect to uh, local instances also. When we select SQL Server authentication, we need to provide the username and password for the instance. Suppose you want to connect to an SQL Server instance installed in network system, you can provide the computer name here. It might be the one, the two, or something else. Or you may need to connect an SQL Server instance installed in a static uh, server. So in that case, you need to provide the static IP here. In case of Azure, you need to provide the complete uh, domain name. Okay. For now, I will be using localhost SQL 2014 in Windows Authentication mode. Click on Connect. Now we are successfully connected to SQL Server instance. Like this, we can connect any number of SQL Server instance in the same management studio. Under databases, you can see system databases and below that you can see few uh, databases. These are the databases uh, needed for the uh, proper working of SQL Server and it is added by the SQL Server instance uh, during uh, installation. And here you can disconnect the connection by clicking on this button and then if you right click on the instance name you can see that the, we have some options like stop, pause, restart. We can uh, restart the instance or stop the instance from uh, management studio itself. We don't need to open the service list. There also you can uh, see the options to stop, pause, restart the instance. If you click on this new query button, you can open a new query window where you can type uh, SQL Server queries. On the query tab, you can see the connected SQL Server instance on which the query will be executed. And here you can see the selected database on which we execute this uh, new query. Suppose you want to know the SQL Server instance details, you can write the query like this, select at at version and we have to execute this query. For that you can use the shortcut F5 or you can click on this button execute. So below you can see the result, Microsoft SQL Server 2014 Express Edition 64 bit. That's it guys, thanks for watching this video tutorial. In the next video we will discuss introduction to SQL Server databases and we will uh, do operations like create, alter, drop databases in SQL Server. Please be subscribed to my channel for more awesome videos like this and don't forget to like and share this video with your friends and colleagues so that they can benefit from this. Have a nice day. Bye.